topics today is going to be reef burnout. And I'm going to tell you some of the things that I do. Take a look at my skimmer to keep me moving ahead and not wanting to throw in the towel. The new tank, which is going to be 75 gallon. All this is going to come out DIY. The glass is going to take about 10 days to be cut and polished. Another topic today is going to be ammonia spikes. When you don't have a large enough bacteria culture. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the dreaded reef burnout. I did a video on this before, but I got a question about it and I'm going to tell you how I deal with it and see if it makes any sense to you guys. All right, so everybody has their own ways of handling a little bit of burnout. You know, you're just looking at your tank and you don't feel like doing anything to it. I've been there. I get there maybe once a month. Let me show you my skimmer. Take a look at my skimmer. So sometimes I let this go two weeks. If I don't want to dig in there and take it out, I'll let it go a second week. It's still creating schemate down there. See it? So that's one of the things I do when I get a little lazy. We don't want it to become a job. So if you get that burnout feeling, don't pay too much attention to how long it's going to last. You know, what your mind's telling you. What I do is I don't let the tank control me. I control the tank. So for example, if I'm changing water weekly and I don't feel like it, I'm not going to change water. I'm going to skip a water change. So skipping a water change means skipping a lot of work because usually you clean the filter sock if you use it or you clean your floss. You clean your skimmer. And maybe you're siphoning your sand bed or vacuuming your sand bed. So you're going to skip that for a week. So you don't know how you're going to feel the following weeks. Don't worry about it. You won't crash your tank. You just have to be prepared to then put a little extra effort into it when you come back. Not to, to get it. too deep on you, but sometimes when your life situation is kind of real heavy. It's going to take me a month to get rid of it. Water change twice a week. There's nothing good about hair algae and things aren't going the way you would like them to go. We tend to take it out on our tank. It's still waving around in there, blowing around on the rocks. You know, now we're really lazy. We're angry at it. Or snails. I don't know. We don't want to deal with it. So you might find out that when things in your life situation get a little better, you're a little more motivated to handle your tank. Let me show you these little white snails I have in here. I had to show you. They're really great little helpers. You can't buy them. They're usually on your live rock. If they start to multiply, they can really help your tank out. Let me show you. You can see them in the back corner on the overflow. See them? And then over here, they come out all over the glass. There's one there, but I'm talking hundreds of them come out. So you can see them in the overflow box. They're all over the place. They're called colonista. They've done a good job on my hair algae as long as it's down real low. So I'm getting some questions about ammonia, why suddenly a spike. So we'll talk a little bit about cycle and ammonia spikes. When you don't have a large enough bacteria culture in your tank to handle your load, that's why sometimes they occur when you're adding new things to the tank, which is rare because usually there's enough bacteria culture that when you're adding living animals to your tank, there won't be an ammonia spike. One cause for ammonia spikes is if something dies big time in your tank. If it dies and your biological load cannot handle that, then you could potentially get a spike in ammonia. Some people think that if you're transferring your tank, 
rock. Say you have a pile of live rock in an established 10 gallon tank and you're putting that now into a 20 gallon tank. The thought might be, oh, I'm adding 20 gallons of new water or even 10 gallons of new water. Could that cause an ammonia spike? And no, your biological filter and bacteria are on surfaces of things, surfaces of your rocks, surfaces of your tank sides, surfaces of everything. So when you take that out and put it into a new tank, you're still carrying that bacteria into the new tank. So by adding more water, it's just like a larger water change. So you won't have any ammonia spike that way. The other thing you might want to think of is this. Although it takes two to six weeks, whatever, for your tank to cycle, Once your tank is cycled, have you ever thought about how quickly ammonia is being converted to nitrite and nitrate? It's almost instantaneous. So therefore, what would be required to make a spike in ammonia would be an extensive amount of ammonia to exceed what your bacteria could consume. I had a couple questions. I had a couple, I had a couple, jeez. My green mushrooms in my six gallon are actually moving around. Let me show you. You can see that they've moved. Here, I'll show you one that I had from the past. You can see this one has moved down. This one has moved way over. So that's kind of cool. They're probably looking for light. It looks rather bright here, but if I step back, that's more of the way it actually is. So you can see down at the bottom that these aren't getting much light. I'll have to move the whole structure into the new tank. So I have to keep the lighting the same. So it's going to be interesting on how I place my lights above the 75 gallon, which is going to be right in here. 75 gallon DIY is a big undertaking. If I want it to really look good, I'm gonna do a mint job on it. As soon as my glass comes in, we're off to the races with content. Have a great Sunday and I'll see you on the next one.